John, who had just come home from work, heard the news about Comet Clark, discovered by NASA two weeks ago. According to reports, this comet is so close to Earth that it's clearly visible during the day. When he got home, his wife Allison was there. Their relationship seemed strained, as their conversation appeared very awkward. Not long after, Nathan came home. It's important to note that Nathan has diabetes and uses tools to manage his condition. Then, there was news on television stating that Comet Clark wasn't a single comet but was made up of hundreds of pieces of rock and ice that had been destroyed millions of years ago. As the day went on, they got ready to watch the comet with their neighbors. Before the neighbors arrived, John and Nathan went to the supermarket to buy food. When they got there, they saw hundreds of fighter planes flying in one direction, coinciding with the appearance of Comet Clark. While choosing food, John received a warning notice from the president. Additionally, he was contacted by the United States Department of Homeland Security, informing him that he and his family were selected for evacuation to an emergency shelter. When he got home, the neighbors had gathered. John immediately conveyed the emergency warning to Allison. In a live TV broadcast, it was reported that the comet would soon land on the coast of Bermuda, but there was no reaction at all on the beach. From outside, there was the sound of birds chirping. John immediately looked outside, and suddenly, the comet fell in Florida. Astronomers had predicted it wrong. After returning inside, John received another emergency alert from the president. While no one else received the notification, everyone there was confused. John was called again and asked to immediately go to Robbins Air Base for a flight at 2145. They started packing the equipment they needed, including medicine for Nathan. When they were about to leave, their car was stopped by Ed. He asked them to contact him immediately if John found a safe place. There were also other neighbors who asked John to bring their children, but this was impossible because John could only bring his family. That night, they were stuck in traffic. Nathan brought a blanket from his bag and, unfortunately, dropped the medicine he needed. News circulated again that several fragments of Comet Clark had fallen in other areas. According to NASA, there would be very large fragments that could cause destruction on the face of the Earth and it was estimated that this would occur in around 48 hours. At the entrance, there were many people who wanted to enter even though they were not selected. John continued to walk to the front and was asked to show his ID and code, then they had to go to Warm 33 to get a bracelet as a token. The equipment they brought was too much, even though the rule was to bring only one bag for each family. They were forced to unpack it again. At that moment, Allison realized Nathan's medicine was missing. The flight time was about 20 minutes away so John had enough time to get the medication from the car. Allison told the guard that John was out with medicine for Nathan, but there were rules against bringing sick people. After John came back, he was confused because Allison and Nathan weren't there. John tried to get on the plane, but someone noticed his medicine and said sick people couldn't join the flight. Hearing this, John decided to go out, but outside many people broke in to be part of the evacuation even though they were not among the chosen ones. There was a commotion, which led to an explosion. John found a small note from Allison, indicating that Allison and Nathan had not been evacuated. Allison went to the pharmacy to get the medicine Nathan needed, but suddenly, a group of people forced them to leave immediately. After that, Allison got a ride from Ralph and Judy. John tried to find a signal to contact Allison, and they managed to communicate briefly before the signal was lost again. Not long after, John got a ride from someone named Colin. Colin noticed the bracelet John was wearing and mentioned that the chosen people were deemed useful like Colin's mother, who worked as a doctor. However, due to their strained relationship, Colin was not included in the evacuation. Colin told John that they were going to Canada to meet his friend, a pilot. They planned to get a lift to a refugee location in Greenland. Ralph suddenly stopped and revealed his plan to pretend to be Nathan's parents to board another flight, leaving Allison stranded on the side of the road. Suddenly, another passenger demanded John's bracelet. John refused to give it, as it was registered in his name. A scuffle ensued, causing the driver to lose control, leading to an accident. The confrontation continued until John managed to resolve it. Feeling remorseful, Allison was offered a lift by a kind person heading in the same direction she needed to go. Upon arriving at the airport, Ralph told the officers that his bracelet had been stolen, leaving only the bracelet worn by his son Nathan. However, Nathan bravely stated that Ralph and Judy were not his parents, and he was immediately taken to safety by the officers. There was a long traffic jam. Allison decided to get out and run to the airport to ask the officers where Nathan was. The officers quickly directed Allison to the emergency tent, and yes, they were reunited. Her happiness didn't end there, as Allison was also taken to her father's house by military officers. Days passed, 
and with no other choice, John entered someone's house to seek help, but found no one inside. There, he saw the news of many casualties, and the most terrifying thing, within twenty-four hours, large comet fragments would hit the earth. John immediately left, borrowing a car and leaving a letter. He arrived at his in-law's house, Dale's house, but Allison and Nathan were not there. Dale was angry that John couldn't take Allison with him. When Allison was near Dale's house, she called Dale and John immediately picked her up. Upon returning home, they saw news reporting that at around 8.47 the next day, giant fragments were expected to hit parts of Europe and North Africa. The news also mentioned that bunkers were being established in Greenland. Upon seeing this news, John remembered what Colin had said the day before and decided to go to Canada to meet the pilot Colin had mentioned. John and Allison tried to persuade Dale to go to Canada with them, but he refused the invitation, even though he knew the danger were in. Not long after, fragments hit the ground near them. This situation forced John to leave as soon as possible before it was too late. They left in Dale's car, and now they only had fifteen hours left. Arriving in New York, they encountered a long traffic jam due to a train accident. Soon, there was news on the radio announcing that a small meteor shower was expected in northern New York, right where they were. And yes, the meteor started falling, and John had to quickly find a place to take shelter. They stayed there until the evening. Once conditions were completely safe, they continued their journey towards Canada, with only six hours left before the giant comet hit the Earth. The radio news informed us that the comet set to hit the Earth this time was much larger than the one that previously destroyed the dinosaur civilization. Its impact could cause major disasters, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, and winds with temperatures of 900 degrees, moving at speeds exceeding the speed of sound. The airport was in sight. John broke through the fence to get in faster. When the last plane was about to take off, John chased it. Suddenly, the plane turned around, and fortunately it stopped. The pilot came out and said the plane was full. After a conversation, they were allowed to board. After flying, they arrived in Greenland. However, the plane experienced turbulence caused by fragments of the comet falling near the area. The shock wave impact made the plane lose control, forcing an emergency landing. Unfortunately, the pilot did not survive the crash. John saw a military plane landing quite far from their location. They had no other choice but to get there quickly. Luckily, troops spotted them and immediately picked them up. They entered the bunker area, accompanied by the sight of a giant comet ready to hit the earth in a few seconds. They immediately ran towards the bunker. Even in the bunker, they would definitely feel the effects of the comet's impact. Now, the countdown was only ten seconds away. Nine months later, we see that the earth has been devastated, with only the rubble of buildings remaining. After a long time, the bunker's door was opened. Everyone was very surprised to see the earth's condition, but amidst the destruction, the earth was now safe from radiation. They realized they had to start life anew. And this is where the film ends. Thank you for watching.